Welcome to the New Discovery Christian Podcast, where you'll find Bible messaging and sermons that will encourage, uplift, and challenge you to a godlier life. Join our community and become inspired to continue living a God-directed life. So welcome to the New Discovery Podcast. Tune in again in, what's this month? September? <gasps> September, right? Am I right? Yeah, it's okay, September. I'm just checking myself. Labor Day! I could be wrong. Yeah, we're working. Yep. So you're tuning in to another podcast with me and Zach, and it's going to be a little bit of an experimental podcast today. For instance, we're probably not going to look at the camera as much. We're going to look at me and Zach. We're going to look at it as more in like a conversation. It's early in the morning, a little coffee, a little uh, coffee conversation. Lots of coffee. Lots of coffee, bringing us to life. So that'll be a difference. You're also going to see a difference today, too, because we're just going to read through a scripture, and it's attached to what we've been going through, through grace, um, and today's going to focus more on ab- God's abundance. And yeah, uh, tune into that, and we're just going to kind of give our thoughts. We're going to see how long it goes. It may be a little different. Um, Nestor will probably do some beautiful miracle editing for us, so it looks a lot better. <laughs> see what myth, happens. The legend, Nestor. Nestor. Uh, so yeah, just tune in with us today, and we're, we're going to see where it goes. It's going to be an adventure. So if you want to follow along with us, uh, we're going into Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse 25, and this is Jesus speaking. You want to uh, you want to read 25 through 27, and I'll take uh, 28 through uh, 34? How about you start us off, and right. then I'll go ahead and I'll end us with that that second paragraph. It does two paragraphs for you, right? Yeah, that's right. Let's yeah, I that. got two. I'll do yeah. the first one. All right. Sounds good to me. All right. All right, so uh, it's Matthew six twenty five. 25. Uh, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, uh, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And Jesus says, and why do you worry about clothes? <clears throat> See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You know, one thing, <clears throat> Zach, that I thought about uh, as I've, I've, I've as I read through this, uh, one thought that can come through my mind, if I'm being quite honest, especially, and it may be because we're like people from the West, the Western part of you know the world, and maybe it's our privilege my privileged thoughts thinking, but I could think of Jesus just as, it's like, yeah, man, peace and love, dude. Yeah, just don't worry about tomorrow, man. You know, like, yeah, I mean, it's all going to be all right. It's cool. The hippie Jesus. Peace and, yeah, peace and love. Don't worry. It's all going to be all right. You know? Yeah. It's just, that that's one of the thoughts that could go through my mind uh, initially kind of looking through it, and that's probably, like I was saying, and I guess what I mean by living in the West is living in a world where we don't have to worry about, cause it talks about, you know, your clothes and your meals and things like that, man. I don't really almost ever have to worry about where my clothes or my meals or water is going to come from, or that my housing is going to come from maybe the housing at one point in my life, but everything else is almost, I mean, it's like guaranteed. It's more like, what will I wear? How good looking am I going to look? And how luxurious are my foods going to be? You, you know? Were, and you, yeah, you're talking about like living in the West too. Mm. Um, I think we have a problem 
especially in this country with depression mm-hmm. and people being depressed. And I think it's because we've, we've been so blessed and we have all these things. People are worrying about how, how good they look and comparing themselves to other people when they should just look at what they have already, the clothes they have on their back. I mean, you know, this, this talks about not worrying about clothes, which they had to worry about. We don't, we don't have to worry about those things, but people take all this for granted that, that we've been given. And I think that leads to a, a, a depression problem in this country mm-hmm. where other countries don't experience that because they are grateful for what they are, they have and what's got, what God's blessed them with already. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, as far as not worrying, I think you lose out on life if you're, you're thinking about tomorrow or you're thinking about your past too. You know what I mean? Like if you're, you can either, you can either be looking ahead, worrying about something like, I remember when I was in school, I hated public speaking, and I always the most the the most nervous I had ever been was before like a big speech in college. Uh, yeah, in college for public speaking. Did you have a uh, West? Uh, did it start with a W? Was it Northwest? Some some woman. She was like six two. Oh golly, that's not that's not who I had, man. It sounds yeah. like an MBA. But what is it called for the women? <laughs> <laughs> WMBA. WMBA. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, but uh, she. Uh, I, I just got super nervous in that, and, this, and that's because I was looking forward to that. And I was always talking to myself, and what if this goes wrong? What if this goes wrong? Mm-hmm. If you just live in the moment, day by day, just hour by hour, minute by minute, mm-hmm. enjoying life, uh, you you won't be nervous. And it can also go back the other way too, mm-hmm. where you're you know thinking about things you've done or missed opportunities or. Uh, people who passed away in your life, which I know is hard not to think about those kind of things, but you just got to keep on going, living today, living in the hour, the minute. Yeah. I know I went off on a soliloquy right there, but uh, yeah, hey man, uh, Every, anything. Soliloquy is a word, right? Yeah, it's like a type of poem. I'm pretty sure it's like it's either a type of poem, it's a type of like form that you do a poem. I can't remember. It's been a little while. All topics being covered here on the yeah. New Discovery Christian Podcast. Yeah, basketball, mm-hmm. public speaking, sol- soliloquies. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but one thing, one thing you're talking about is you know living here and the privilege that we have. I was listening to a podcast. I'm not even done with it. It's golly, it's like a two. It's a little more than two hour podcast. So I've been listening to it for a couple of days, and uh, Jordan Peterson's on there, and he's just fantastic and everything I listen to. Um, you definitely got to pay attention, man. You rewind like at least 35 times and then make sure you get what he's talking about. But all of it's gold. That's why you want to rewind. And he he was talking about uh, today he got to a topic and they, I mean, it's a big topic about conservatism and liberalism and how they all have their own place. And I'm not going to get into that because, I mean, again, this is almost a three-hour podcast. But but one thing that he brings up in there, though, is how, how it's viewed, how people hear, how kind of like what we're talking about, how an, uh, people in other countries are fighting for being able to find their next meal, what are they going to wear, how are they going to take care of their family, um, you know, they are going to somehow survive off of a dollar of what we get. And then he said over here, and he's in a room with a bunch of college people, I mean, and we're not even talking, I don't even think it's like even like bachelors, it's probably more in the realm of graduate, master's, PhD uh, students. So, you know, they've been in school for a while, and he talks about, you know, uh, you know, we're sitting here in academia and we're sitting here talking about, oh, how could things be better and, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, kind of woes us. And he says, about, now he uses some language I can't, I can't use, but he says it in a very strong manner, just like, golly, how, how can I say this without saying what he says? Do but he's, he, but he's, nah, nah, he, he, he curses in a that. little curse. <laughs> yeah, he curses. But he's like, you know, like how, kind of the language is like, how dare you keep your mindset on, um, oh, well, someone else has something more than me. And he's, uh, he's kind of like, well, yeah, n- yeah, no. And then he kind of curses, yeah. but he's like, but what kind of mindset is that? Like what kind of pitied, arrogant, prideful, overlooking mindset is that when other people are in other countries fighting for their their food and fighting for their clothing and you can't get outside of your own mindset to even recognize that and he's like 
and, and he's he's really well studied in psychology. And he he talks about how what happens to us is when something becomes regular, we overlook it and we don't think about it anymore. So he says, uh, what is he talking about? The electrical, like the electrical grid. That's not something on our mind. But as soon as your electricity goes out, you start to think about it. You start to think about what you m- could not have. And he says, I think we would be a better society if it didn't work 100% of the time. It would be better if it, it worked only 99% of the time. So then when it goes off, uh, I was just listening to this before Jafin came in. Um, and he said, I think we'd be a better society if it were 99% of the time instead of 100% of the time. And don't would, know what you got till it's gone. Yeah, you don't know. And he talks about an, another point where he talks about you don't know how your car works and what you have until it gets messed up. And then you open that hood and you know nothing about cars. And you're like, holy moly, like, I don't know what to do. What is there this? You go. Yeah, like, I don't know what I'm doing here. And you're just like sitting on the side of the road and you're shocked because you don't know what to do. And you're like, oh, man, I just thought my car was just like this whole big thing that just goes down and always works. And you open the hood, and you're like, golly, what is this thing with all that fluid in there? Like, I see some green (laughs) fluid coming out. Like, what is that? Is it like some kind of like Hulk monster? I mean, like, (laughs) man, I need to get an expert on this. (gasps) (laughs) Oh, Yeah, actually, uh, my girlfriend always reminds me uh, on this topic of – how much we're blessed with over here because when she goes back to Mexico where she's from, uh, cold showers, like she sleeps, cold showers. Yeah, her house is always on like seventy eight in the summer, and I'm like, what the heck is this mess? I was like, it's my house. It's Sorry, what, Dad. <laughs> it's not her being cheap though. It's her being used to that living in that temperature and sleeping in that temperature, yeah. and I, and um, it's because they don't have air conditioning down in Mexico, mm, so. Oh. Yeah, so huh. cold showers. You be you're lucky if you have a hot water tank in Mexico, and if it is a hot water tank, it literally it's not it's not much water. You have to take a quick shower to make sure everybody in the family would be able to get oh, wow. get a, get a warm shower. So it's just wow. the things the things in this country we've been blessed with, it, and I mean I'm, I fail at it all the time, not looking at mm. everything. I mean you know if you have a car that's running, you're already doing you're doing good. You can travel. Yeah. I mean, uh, and then. I was thinking about this too. I watched uh, the Last Samurai a couple of days ago. Mm, yeah, pretty good. I mean, Tom me too. Cruise movie. You know, yeah, great um, movie. But great uh, movie. so there, there's a part where he's you know he's trying to work up his swordsmanship, mm. and he's back. He, he's battling that guy. He's in the he's in the samurai camp, learning mm. learning how to be a samurai. And he keeps you know they get the wooden stick because they're just practicing. That's right, and, and, and that's called kendo. Yeah, yeah. And he finally he he keeps getting beat up by this this I guess rival of his at the time because the rival he he wasn't sure about this guy. He oh, wasn't he's sure. the guy in the yeah. beginning that yep. just beats him down yep. with that wooden stick, mm-hmm. and he keeps getting yeah. I know you're talking so about. So he so Tom Cruise keeps practicing against him, and eventually he gets to a point he, he hadn't won yet. He has yet to beat him in a practice round. And he gets to that point where, in his mind, he forgets about his past, all the bad things he's done, and you can just see him just, just focusing on the moment and just, just focusing on what he's about to do. Isn't that when Katsumoto's son tells him, "What does he say? No, he says no one mind, thought? many no mind, mind. no that's mind." Right. He, he says, "No mind." Yeah, yeah which that's right. pretty much he's saying in a broken English, "Forget the those thoughts, just." focus on right now be in the present be in the present mm. and when he does that he ends up he doesn't beat him but he ties him they, they do a tie and everyone's like freaking out because the, the, he the other guy was you know the best swordsman in the in the samurai clan um so it's just what you can do if you focus on just now you can your all your energy is focused on doing one thing you can accomplish a lot more in a day uh like when i'm at work i always try to focus on that day you know, seeing a certain number of customers selling a certain number of dollars that that day instead of worrying about what I'm going to get next week or in a month. I try to just make the most of that day. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you brought up the part of living in the present. Uh, there was another podcast. This isn't Andrew Peterson, but it's the, it's called The Bible Project. And I listened to this probably three years ago. And I remember I was even pulling up to the driveway of the, of the church building. And I couldn't turn it off. Um, I don't remember what I was doing, but I was like, yeah, I, I was like just standing outside because I just I couldn't let it go quite yet. And they talked about how I don't remember if they went over this verse specifically. I think they may have referenced it, though. And they talked about living in the present. And so I'm like, yeah, yeah, live in the present. I mean, you know, that's where we are. And I'm like, no, no, no. 
live in the present. Most people, a majority of people don't do that. And majority of people struggle to be in the present. I was like, hmm. And I kind of just had to think about that. And I was like, your mind tends to go to the past and dwell on the past and then focus on future issues and things like that. And he says, you're not, you're not here. And he says, here's your litmus test. I don't remember he said litmus test, but that's the way I thought about it, though, is here's your litmus test. Are you, can you sit still? Are you able to put the phone down and even turn it off and kind of sit there and look around at just where you are in life right now, what you're doing, uh, and are you grateful for the things that you have? And, and another way of saying that is can you even recognize the things that you have and what you're even doing in the moment? And I had to kind of think through that and process that a little bit. But I was like, he said, try it. He says, go, go do it and see if that's so easy. Uh, he said, you know what? He said, I dare you to go do it. I dare you to go try that and act like that's just easy and a given thing for your life. And I was like, you know what? I, I can get competitive. So I'm like, okay, well, if you're mean, if you're daring me, like, here I go. And I remember that was the, I remember I went home and, and I was giving it a try and it was, it was very hard. It was very hard to just put the phone away, to turn it on. I think I just shut it off and just sit there and kind of just observe where I am, what I'm doing in my life right now, kind of meditate on and just, or use another word, think about the relationships that I have, think about the things that I, that I have right now in my life and the things that I've been given. Um, and I don't mean that as in like, Ooh, <laughs> look how good I am and, you know, look how grateful I am. Not like that, but just like, I noticed I don't live in that state by default. And I said, and I remember I was in a way better state of mind like that than dwelling on the future about things that may not even be. And I remember in the podcast, he said, you're not even living, you're living in a, you're not even living in within reality. Literally. He says, if you're doing that, he says, most people don't live within the present moment and within reality. And um, sometimes it's dwelling on the past. And then when you live in the present, you can live life more fully. And, he, and that's and then he started talking about that and focusing on that. And, of course, they had a whole podcast about that. And that's why I couldn't put it down because he says you flourish and you grow. Um, he said it's like a plant. Uh, and he talked about how, in some of the prophets, he talks about how there's a plant living in God's uh, God's house, and it's growing, and God's watering. He says that's like living in the present right there, receiving the water that's being placed on you, receiving the nutrients and the fertilizer that's being given to you, and you can flourish in that. He says, but in the future, you waste all your energies, and you miss all the good stuff. And then, same thing with the past, if you just keep dwelling on that You'll never, you'll never receive the blessing of being given gifts. Um, and if you seek his kingdom first, mm. it puts everything into perspective too because then you're not worrying about those things. Because mm. if, you, if you've got the hope of heaven mm. and the hope of being with Jesus, you can just focus on that and then you know you'll be able to get through the toughest times because think about all the tough times you went through before. Everyone's been through tough times before. You got through them. You might not have thought. Your, your stomach might have been hurting. It was just so tough to get through it. But you got through it. And if you seek his kingdom first and put that as your number one focus, you won't have to worry about if you're going to be able to get through it because you know you'll be able to get through it. Yeah, and 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 that could open up a whole other discussion into other things within the scriptures of how you know, we don't want to go down this. I, I, I think we can talk about it, but I think it's a whole podcast in itself. But God is, God wants the best for people. And that's not something that's necessarily, and we've talked about this before, but that's not something, we don't act in a way as if God wants our best intentions. We don't, we don't, that's not our default. Our default is, I got to take the reins and I got to do what's best for me. Grab the bull the by the horns. Yeah, grab the bull by the horns. I'm the master. I'm the the captain of my own ship. By um, uh, Shakespeare wrote that down. Um, but once you make God the captain of your ship, he's got such a better viewpoint than you. Um, he can navigate those seas way better than you because, I mean, he created the seas. So whereas in you, you're like, 
man, I've never even like been on a boat before. Right. You know, like try navigating that. Let me know how that goes when you've never been on a boat before, let alone created one or have super like a lot of experience with it. And then even if you do, someone else created that and designated that who has the better route than you. And, and but we don't think like that though. We we generally don't think like that. We just think we like you said, take the bull by the horns, do your thing. That's how you take control. Um, that's how you're doing life to the fullest. But your perspective is way smaller than someone else, and then you're going to get yourself into a whole lot of trouble because you can't see those things coming coming up, mm -hmm. right? But God, but God does though. And I think that's the whole point of the kingdom and also the righteousness. And righteousness just means God setting things, God setting things right to the way that things need to be. And we all know what that means within us. We all know there's issues with the world. It doesn't really matter who you are. You have, you, most people know evil exists. It's harder to define good, but evil, go look at Nazi Germany Go look at what Stalin did, Mao in China, and the millions of people that were slaughtered and thrown into camps. All these shootings going on now. And, mm. and I think with all these, the good deeds are oftentimes not projected in the media. Sometimes, because sometimes the good deeds, one, they aren't, they aren't boistered about. They're not, you know, some guy is not bragging about all the good things he did. Um, but, and I think evil polarizes people. Evil gets unfortunately gets eyeballs on the tv you know if if you watch the memphis local memphis news it'll be bad 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 and then two minutes right before they go off they'll be like oh and uh this police officer saved this dog mm. and then they'll be done so they always try to put that little cherry on top of good but it's always bad 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 so it just polarizes you I'm the, glad the, the you brought bad. that Don't up. Don't focus on just the bad. Focus on the good that's going on. You got to look harder for it, but you find it. I, 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 I'm glad you brought that up because I, I, I think I actually think this is talking to that because Jesus wants you to focus on look how much God is taking care of. Of I mean, what are the different things he talks about? I mean, he talks about how the grass, the birds, the grass and the birds are so much being taken care of. And I'm wondering if he talks about. Okay, uh, does he talk about the flowers? Flowers, yep. Flowers, top of a. Uh, it's in. Does he mention a lily? The lilies in here. That may be Luke. I don't know because he lilies. repeats it again. The flowers are in there. See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Okay, is there a part where it talks about how much Solomon was dressed? Yeah, even Solomon wasn't even dressed like these. Yeah, and just. But those those are that's the focus of focusing on, on good things that are going on in life. And I don't think very often we we think like that. I, I don't think we really do. And I think Jesus is changing a certain paradigm, I think, of, of mindset, of focus on how much, so much of you've been given. And if, I mean, if all those things are so well taken care of, well, man, you're like a son of God. Like how much more will you be taken care of? And Jesus even talks about that in another area of scripture where he talks about, uh, will you give, if your son asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? No. And and you who are evil, and he's just mentioning, you know, that perspective between us and God. Obviously, we're more corrupted in comparison to God. God's, God's fully good and fully holy. And he's like, and if that's true, and even you'll do that, yeah, then the holy, good father is going to give you your fish in time. And, and, even more than that. But again, that's a different mindset of uh, an abundant mindset versus a scarcity mindset. A scarcity mindset thinks, oh, look how much I don't have. That's a, that's a mindset. And the focus is, oh, I don't have this. He has that. While I don't have that. And he has that. And I want that. This isn't enough. Whereas in the abundant is like, See, some people may even laugh at this in this mindset because this isn't a mindset of other people and people laugh at it. Wow, I actually have clothes today. Some people don't. Wow, I actually have clothes that like actually cover me up and keep me warm and it's what I need. Wow, I actually have a, fr I don't just have food for today. I have a giant refrigerator full of food probably for the next month if I could stretch it. I, I wake up sometimes, I'm like, golly, I have two cars. How privileged are you? While air conditioners blowing onto my face, with the fan blowing on me, 
Actually, there's two air conditioners. There's one in the in the window unit. There's one blowing down on me. There you go. Wow, how privileged are you? Sitting on a chair that's a couple hundred dollars with a bunch of books over here. In college. Wow. We've got everything we need, man. Yeah, and it, it's, it it's more than that. And it's like what we Way got what more. we need, but even what we want Way is more. fully being taken care of. And it's like we actually, it talks about in the book of Ecclesiastes, it talks about pity the rich man who is given so much more than the than the rich person, but he's not, it said, it's it's meaningless if he can't enjoy what he has. And his life is worse, and then they get pretty, pretty, pretty strong in the words. He says he's worse off than a stillborn child if he can't enjoy the things that he has. And he's worse than the poor man who has way little but can enjoy it. He said that's the gift of God. And I've always tried to remember that. I'm like, you know what? That is a, that's a way of being right there. And he says, just because you're rich doesn't mean you enjoy what you have. Mm. I think I think I think that's a good place to to cut this podcast off right there. Yeah, I think that's good. Enjoy what you have, you know. Enjoy what you have. Look, appreciate what God's given you. Appreciate the opportunity to go to heaven when you mm. pass away, and then just focus on focus on the present. I think yeah. the main things from that passage. If you apply those, you'll be a lot happier. And I think one thing to leave off on is that that's not an easy task. That's a lifelong task. That's discipline. Every day. Yeah, that's that's something you cultivate within yourself. Um, and I, I try very, very hard each day, and it is a hard thing to do, actually. But if you do it, like Ecclesiastes says, it's like the gift of God being given to you. So thank you for jumping in on this podcast with us, me and Zach, today. Mm. Um, we hope you got something out of this discussion. I think I, I mean, I think I got more out of the discussion talking with Zach. Um, if you like it, please leave a like, uh, a review for us on... Um, Give me a toast. Oh, a little toast? I don't think I have anything in there, but yeah. All right. Maybe that's a toast to a refill, I think. Yes, sir. Yeah. Got to get our caffeine in. But I want to remind everyone, if you're on YouTube, um, remember this is a podcast. So we're on a whole bunch of other different sites because what I do is I listen to these when I go um, and I travel to my work or my school or something like that and instead of sitting and watching a video, which is cool if you want to do that. But remember, we're on you know Spotify, iTunes. Uh, we're on Google podcast instagram well i don't think you can listen on instagram but we are on instagram, we are on follow instagram. Us. yeah follow, follow us. us on there you'll get updates when everything's coming up so you'll know when those uh episodes are coming up but yeah we want to remind you of that we're on all those platforms and if you want to go over there and check us out awesome and we'll see you there see you on the next one <laughs> I've got a little last samurai story for this. Ooh. The light of the restroom. <laughs> Just pee right there by outside. <laughs> I am the Senate. <laughs> Go. <laughs> I am the Senate. <laughs> I am the Senate. <laughs> Execute Order 66.